Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a radio replacement on this 2008 Jeep Wrangler. In this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio, head over the bench, get the new radio wired up with the dash kit, wiring harness, and other accessories, and get back here and get this thing installed. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is remove the bezel up and around the radio before we can unbolt the radio. Now, usually we need to um, remove this lower trim panel here. We have a panel tool that we can kind of get up behind and just start popping out. Just held on with clips here in the top, two clips, and then the bottom are just tabs that allows it to sit flat. Once those are out of the way, we need to remove the two seven millimeter screws on the left and the right hand side there. Okay, once those are out of the way, we're gonna turn our attention to up above the radio. Same kind of thing. We'll start in the back here. Just held in the clips in the back, just like that. Unclip from the front here. Now you may have something here. If you do, you can just leave it, just set it further back. Okay, so once that's out of the way, usually we'll have two screws on the left and the right hand side. We're actually missing one here, but we're gonna remove this seven millimeter. And once that's been removed, the rest of the panel should just be held on with clips here. Be very careful. Just like so. Now you can kind of leave it there if you wanted to. For now we are. What we're gonna do from this point is remove the four seven millimeter bolts up and around the radio. All right, with those four screws removed at this point, give it a tug, it should come on out. Disconnect your wiring harnesses. All of them are held on with little tabs. You press in the tab and it should just come on out just like so. Okay, there is our radio, all removed. At this point, let's head over to the bench and show you what parts we're gonna need for this install. This video is sponsored by Crux Interfacing Solutions, an excellent location for radio replacements, camera interfaces, and more. Check out cruxinterfacing.com to start planning your next install today. Okay, so we're here at the bench and some of the parts that we're gonna need for our install today. First and foremost, the customer has chosen to go with this 10 inch really large screen uh, dual radio. This is a doubled in radio, but the screen itself is a floating screen, kind of like Alpine's halo screen, where it sticks out and it's a full 10.1 inch monitor. To accompany our doubled in radio that we've chosen to go with, uh, we need this Crux wiring interface. This is a smart harness for this vehicle. This is the SOOCR-26. Now this wiring interface does not retain steering wheel controls because this model year of Jeep Wrangler typically doesn't come with steering wheel controls. However, um, if you do have steering wheel controls in your application, then you'd want to go with this version, which is the, the Crux SWRCR-59. Since we don't have steering wheel controls in our Jeep, we're gonna go with this model wiring harness. And if you wanna see more information on this wiring harness, we'll have an unboxing here for you as well. To accompany our doubled in chassis, not the screen, but the chassis into the factory location in the dash, we need a doubled in dash kit. And for this Jeep, it calls for the Metro 95-6511. We need an antenna adapter, which is the Metro 40-EU10. And then finally, because this will have USBs on the back of the radio, we're gonna go with a flush mount adapter to relocate those USBs to a more convenient location. We're gonna flush mount a USB input in the, in the dash a little bit lower in the factory location of one of the power sockets. Um, so we'll show you what that looks like a little bit later, but it's an aux USB flush mount. Now, if you wanna see any of these part, part numbers, we're gonna have a nice list in the description, so check that on out. So first thing that we need to do is grab the wiring harness and the chassis of the radio out of the box. We're gonna wire our dual wiring harness to the wiring harness of our crux adapter. And then we need to get the chassis of our radio mounted in the bracket. Let's get started. Okay, so our kit comes with instructions, 
the wiring harness itself. Now there's two variants to this wiring harness depending on the make and model that you're putting this to and the main brain box itself, which allows you to uh, retain those factory features. So now in case you're unfamiliar with wiring harness coloring, because this wiring harness is very colors, they are coded here. Um, it walks you through which each wire does and how to connect it to your chosen aftermarket radio, where the big harness connects to and where the little harness connects to. On the next page here, again, based on the second generation harness, so again, remember it comes with two, which we'll cover here in a minute, same type of thing. It provides you that diagram based on where you need to connect each wire. All right, so with the bag pulled apart here, again, you have two versions of the wiring harness here. This is for the first generation. Remember, it has a little use, and you would match this up in your vehicle. It should plug right on in. And again, this is the second generation. Um, this is a little bit different wiring harness style. So you'll have to look at your factory plug to identify which of these two harness plugs that you'll use. Okay, so before we determine which wiring harness from our Crooks kit that we need, we're looking at this wiring harness adapter here. Now this wiring harness adapter, there's two versions of the harness that Crux provides and you need to match them up to the one that fits. Now looking here, we've chosen this one of the two and this one as we kind of look at it here, it does slide on in perfectly. So let's head over to the bench using this wiring harness to start prepping our aftermarket equipment. Okay, so we're here at the bench here. Since we've identified of our Crux harness, this is the one that we're going to want to use. Uh, we have this here on the bench. We have the wiring harness that comes with the radio. And what we're gonna do is match up colors and get those soldered together. Now in addition, we got our dash kit pulled apart here. It comes with two sets of different, I call them little wingies, side pieces here. And you need to determine based on the style of your doubled in, which ones are gonna fit the best with the kit in the dash. So you may have to do a little bit of test fitting here. We have our antenna adapter here as well, and our double USB, because one of them's gonna go to the CarPlay in the back, and then the other one we're just gonna strictly design to be full-time charging. Okay, so we've prepared our wiring harness. We stripped both ends from our Crux harness and then our dual harness here. And we've actually also put heat shrink on the base of the wires on the dual side, just so as we've soldered everything up, we can slide them up and over those connections. So we're using some solder and a nice hot iron here. And what we're gonna do is just essentially here, heat up the wire and melt that solder right into that connection. And what we're gonna do is continue that through all our wires here, matching color for color. All right, so we got everything soldered up just about. A um, Couple of things to note, basically it's color for color here. And depending if you have the amplified version of your Jeep or not, um, you, it may or may not be using the front speakers here. But essentially here, most of which is color for color. The only thing that is not is the parking brake on our dual side is a pink. And it can be super tempting to connect it to the pink wire on the crux side, but the pink wire on the crux side is a vehicle speed sense. So those won't actually connect whatsoever. The dual radio doesn't support a vehicle speed sense, so we're not going to even worry about hooking this up. We will tape that off. Um, it also supports a power antenna which we'll need to hook up and a remote turn on wire, which is blue white. Uh, we'll probably put a buck connector and keep that available in the event down the road we add an amplifier. At this point, we're gonna move our heat shrink up and over our connections and then use a heat gun to shrink the tubes down, just like so. All right, just one quick note here. If you have the factory upgraded amplified sound system in your Jeep, um, Crux has a specific note in the instructions here of what to do when that is the case. Now, if you have the non-amplified, again, it's just color for color, which you saw us do previously. If you have the amplified version as we do, the factory amplified, you actually have to connect the aftermarket radio's white wire to the correct screen, the white black to the correct screen black, the radio's gray to the purple, and then the radio's green black to the correct purple black. And the reasoning behind it is the factory amplified sound system uses the rear speakers for signal for all the speakers in the Jeep. That's what the amp does. So we want to feed our front radio speaker outputs into the amplifier, not just the rear ones. We actually won't even use the rear ones in our application. We'll actually take the tape those off. And then on this end, that is on the crook side, 
these wires don't go into anything. If you go plug this harness in, you'll notice that these wires don't even go to anything. So we'll have to just cap those off because they're not used. So kind of keep that in mind. You've seen this now wire it two different ways. We have the factory amplified version way. And then previously you saw us wired up as if we didn't have an amplifier. So just a quick note. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is let our harness cool, and then we're gonna wrap our harness and test the tape just to predict the wiring when it's back behind the dash. Okay, so we went ahead and wrapped the, the rest of the harness in test the tape here. This end plugs into the, into the Jeep. This is our smart harness end. This doesn't go anywhere. We'll just need to tuck this out of the way. And then this end plugs into our aftermarket radio. Now we made some Additional connections here, we just teed off and tied in a red and a black in case we had a, an accessory down the road, like a backup camera that we want to power off accessory instead of just the reverse light. So we lift that out and put a buck connector on there. Um, we just tapped into that red and black wire in the harness itself. Also further down, we have a blue-white, which is our amplifier turnout wire. And in case we had an amplifier down the road, we left that out for ease of access. Now this guy isn't an aux, this is the steering wheel control harness, which our Jeep does not have steering wheel controls. So this will be unused and we'll just hang out in there. Now this is our amplified connection here. So this is our speaker output from our radio. It goes into our harness here. Since we have the amplifier version, we connect it into the amplified side. Again, if you don't have the amplified version, you'd connect it into the other side. So that is our wiring harness. It is done. Let's set this off to the side and focus our attention on the dash kit for our aftermarket radio. Okay, so we're back here in the car. Now, before I start assembling everything here in the dash, um, if you're doing a double din, most double dins will require you to remove the rear bracket. And as you can see, I spent probably an hour trying to get that thing out, out of that dash. I ended up cutting it in half and bending it so I could pull it out. The top is held in with two seven millimeters. You can get to it from the top there. And then the bottom is held in. I used the 5 16s to get it out, two bolts. To get that thing out, that was quite an experience. Um, as you can see, it kind of goes in there and um, I cut down the middle so I could fold it in on itself and bend the tabs in. Needless to say, it's not ever gonna go back in the car. Um, but we got it out, which frees up a ton of space here. I didn't film it because I had spent so much time mucking around with it, but just kind of keep in mind if your double din doesn't fit and maybe because of that bracket that's there and you have to get creative figuring out the best way to get that out of the dash and that was our solution here so we're going to throw that away now additionally here before i get started i showed you on the bench we did a dual usb or at least planning to to get that installed and i popped out the factory um, power socket there and put that on there with a little bit of hot glue so it doesn't move around and what we're going to use is the top one is going to go to the radio and the bottom one is just going to be a charge for the charge side, I popped the socket back in to the wiring harness there because it's just sitting in the dash. And for the bottom one, it's this USB. I put it there into a five volt adapter and we're gonna plug it in and just tuck it back behind the dash, which converts this bottom one into a charge only. And the top one will go to the radio for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Okay, so we're back in the Jeep here. Now we're fully ready to go ahead and get our wiring kit and our new radio installed. So we attach our antenna adapter into the antenna plug. We'll tuck that back out of the way just so it doesn't eat up any extra space that we don't, that we really need. It's going to be really tight behind this. We have our USB from our mod down below for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We're not going to be using the GPS antenna or Sirius XM antenna there, so we'll just tuck them out of the way. We ran a Bluetooth mic just up here on the dash. Um, you can run the Bluetooth mic any way you like. Um, but other than that, we're all ready to go. Now we have our wiring harness. Everything's all connected here. Let's go ahead and plug it into our plug, which plugs right on in. Now we just need to tuck this brain box up and out of the way. Okay, let's grab our radio. Now we don't have the screen attached to it just to keep it nice and safe. Antenna plugged in, our USB here, get our Bluetooth mic. That is all our connections here. Start working it back into the dash. All right. Okay, it's tight, but it fits. But 
what we're gonna do is just get the screen on so we can test everything before we totally button this up. Okay, so we got the dash basically clipped back in in place. Before I do everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and get the screen connected so I can check to make sure our USBs and everything are working properly. Okay, so what we've done here is got the screen mounted. We're able to get the screws on both sides, put in the end caps. It actually turned out really, really nice. Um, generally with these model years of Jeep, there wasn't steering wheel controls available, but if you do happen to have a Jeep and want those steering wheel controls, um, we'll post in the description the variant of wiring harness that will retain those for you. This one obviously doesn't have any buttons on the steering wheel, um, and so we're gonna rely on the volume knob right here. But we got this all in, dash is all back together. It was super tight, took a lot of time to finesse and get fitted correctly, but in the end, uh, we really like the way this turned out. So other than that, we are done with this install. If you like what you saw here, be sure to hit that like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe. We post great content all the time, and uh, we will see you in the next video.